Weapons online. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to some more MWO Comp action. Uh, my name's Toaster, and I'm here with my good friend. And his good friend is Saruman of many colors, and it's good to be back, ladies and gentlemen. And despite the fact that Toaster and I have had a good hiatus, you guys are being taken care of by wonderful gentlemen and scholars, the likes of Just Call Me Ash, Seabiscuit, and Teos, who casted some very good matches at the back end of uh, Martial Olympiad Reborn 8v8. We would have loved to do it, but unfortunately, Toaster and I had to step away, as we said in our last cast, but it's good to be back. We're here to cast ISC, and we have some very, very strong matches going on. Toaster, who are we casting today, sir? Tonight we're casting uh, Merc Star Crab people, a uh, fan of the crabs, love the crabs, versus DSAG Diamond Sharks. Uh, and as, as Shaman mentioned, this is uh, not more eights anymore. This is ISC, the Intersphere Coalition Tournament, a uh, 6v6 tournament hosted by Aces Wild. Um, what do you know about this tournament, Saruman? <laughs> Well, the first thing I know is that it's going to be more similar to BFM than it is going to be to Martial Olympiad Reborn 8v8 because the tournament's in a 6v6 all-conquest format. You're not going to see any domination. We're not going to have any fashion shows of Outreach HBG, you know, being on domination by teams just sitting there mechs in applicable positions where they can't be sniped out of 228. Panic button tucking his flea in that adorable little corner. And uh, what we're going to see is that it's going to be a cap-focused game, it's going to be cap-centric, and it's going to be a bit more of a smaller more intimate format instead of it being focused on five caps it's going to be three caps with there only being five with only teams being able to cap all five caps after all players are eliminated that might mean that more elimination based strategies will be preferred but i think at the end of the day what's going to happen is that we're going to see a nice balance of things kamichiwa how are you sir how are you doing real quick there's kind of a, a faux pas in the lobby yeah something happened in the lobby saruman <laughs> we got a bit of it somehow dsag got in team one side i don't i think it's that just someone from Merkstar was it's invited okay, late because we're, we're all in king crabs so they didn't see it. okay okay, okay. <laughs> well that's good um, thank you very much for queuing that in. Sorry about that, Kamichiwa. Unfortunately, we were busy doing some other things. And yes, it looks like um, Prototelis is very accurate. I am Saruman of many failures. So <laughs> thank you very much for that. Uh, no problem. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. All, All right. right. Well, it's good. Well, I mean, DSAC brought an extra player, so, you know. Some, some mistakes all around the board. But anyways, as you said, uh, this is going to be th three cap conquest. So if anyone's not familiar with that, I'll, I'll uh, just go ahead and open up the map strap over here. Weapons and it's online. nice to know that we're already memeing it up and memeing it off right now. Mer Merkstar coming in saying oh. that DSAG may have seen their builds, but they did not. So I think we're okay. Nobody's going to complain. Hopefully not. And uh, if they do, well, it's your fault for having one's drop. I'm just kidding. I don't mean to be that savage, but even still, um, what we've seen so far is that uh, ISC is going to be close to the BFM format. It's going to be 6v6. Focus is going to be on three cap points with only five cap points being applicable after a team's been killed completely. And what we're going to see is inner sphere mechs only. That's very interesting because that basically means no linebacker, no Mad Cat Mark II, no Hellbringer, especially no Hellbringer Virago. I believe that heroes are still on the table. Let me just make sure that no, we got no that heroes, no heroes, no heroes, even no more heroes. interesting. So it's going to be I do believe founders mechs are in. Yes, Founders mechs are in, uh, all the loyalty mechs, resistance mechs, that sort of thing. Even the Sarah's Jenner's in, but no heroes. A little, I guess I guess the hero, the Sarah's Jenner is an S, not an H, so I guess that, that's what makes that difference. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting, kind of like uh, World Championships 2018 in that regard, but you know, there's it's not a stock loadouts either, though, so you definitely see more optimized builds here, no, Although no bracket we could builds. Very we could very well see stock loadouts for the memes. Who knows? Teams love to meme each other. And if there's a meme king team, it's Merkstar. And now, before we begin, since it seems like the teams are still set up, recovering from the unfortunate gaffe of me paying more attention to other screens than the lobby, uh, Merkstar is coming back. They're trying to make a return to form after what seemed to be a bit of a landslide back in Div B. They had some very impressive wins. They beat White Knight Legion midway through the tournament. They beat some pretty top contender teams, but it seemed like they started falling down the slope and 
give B and cause them to lose their position. But that doesn't mean that they're any less lacking for talent. Prototellus and Xavier performed admirably as the main light pilots. And then after that, you have Kamichiwa, Damocles 1, and Crimson Helix, who also performed well. Crimson Helix, primarily a medium and heavy. Kamichiwa doing heavy and assaults very well. Damocles 1 walking away as kind of the MVP for Merkstar, but the team overall definitely had some good performers. However, Merkstar may be hurting a little bit. Um, according to the roster, Pyth 121 isn't there. Pyth, um, yeah, he was uh, one of their best players going by the statistics of Mer- Marshall Olympiad 8v8. The Marshall Olympiad Reborns tournament data, uh, thankfully brought to us by Cozen Indigo. We greatly appreciate it, dude. Your contributions to the comp scene are basically unmatched. You know, he does a podcast. He does team breakdowns. Very smart guy. Came up with this spreadsheet. Allowed us to get the ball rolling. <clears throat> does our job for us, basically. But yeah, yeah, Merc Stark, uh, losing, losing Pyth is going to hurt. But, you know, we, we say they lost Div B, right? Div B, but Div B NA was a very tight race, you know. The top team was four and three, and Merkstar was actually four and three. So you know, it wasn't a uh, a loss by leaps and bounds. It was it was a matter of inches that kind of separated even the you know the first ranked team and the seventh ranked te- team in that division. But I don't know. We talked about enough about Merkstar. I want to talk about DSAG? How DSAG did? He's- Talking about DSAG, um, what happens with DSAG is that they won Div C and they tied up the division with Merkstar, both of those teams performing admirably well. However, because DSAG won a nail biter against uh, Dropship 4 in the third round, that match coming down to one kill, coming to a close three conclusion. I believe that we streamed a toaster. It was kind of the game of which light pilots could throw the best, but at the end of the day, it was filled with a lot of redemption arcs filled with a lot of great games filled with a lot of close tight matches and man DSEC definitely showed that they could probably hand it to Div B they had some very impressive wins and yeah. I think that we could see something very good from DSEC unlike Merkstar whose roster is a little little bit more lopsided in statistics you can definitely say that players like Pyth, uh damocles one cozen dingo might have performed better than players like juices loose james bombed other staples of merc star d team statistically was much more even you have um opie you had um Ferrot, who performed very well across the board. Cake Town did admirably as lights. But it's worth noting that um, Diag was a bit more like the boar. You know, they kind of fulfilled all roles. They were jack of all trades, masters of some, considering their mech loadouts, considering the match scores that the guy that the pilots got. It was considered fairly even overall. It was a nice spread. And I think that that um, kind of synergy between the team is what allowed DSAG to come out with the wind. Not to say that they aren't scared. Skilled, but it definitely seemed like it was more about working as a team, working with idealized strats, taking advantage of other teams' mistakes that got DSAG to this point in Div B. And you know what? That's really all you need. They played extremely well in Div C, and I expect them to put up a very good fight against Merkstar in what is cast as our first match in ISC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, DSAG definitely kind of got that homogenization of pilots going. They've de- definitely got some good, uh, I'd say, chemistry between their team. Chemistry that I think some of these other teams kind of need to look at, maybe. Um, and that's probably just by virtue of playing a lot. I see them a lot in group queue as, you know, a big a big group just kind of stomping through, playing maybe some memes, maybe not always super meta stuff, but, you know, they have fun, and uh, that's that's all you can really ask for. Um, yeah, but, but they're the... Oh, I'm sorry, I can say Oh, no, nah, I lost my train of thought. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> you know what? I am so sorry for interrupting you, Toaster. See, this is what happens when you take a break, guys. We're going to have to kind of get our communication back, snap the fingers, get everything ready in order to uh, get the close, the very close, shall I say, bond, very close, shall I say, synergy with my man, Toaster. Uh, it's going to take a bit to warm up back to that situation so that way I don't interrupt him and ruin his thought process. Uh, shame on Sarmon, currently doing the shame fingers right now while holding down my push to talk key. But I'm um, going back to what I was saying. Um, those stats come from Marshall Olympiad 8v8. It's not necessarily the Eisengrim board page. You know, in comp, they worked as a team. In comp, they worked as a close-knit unit. Um, they basically came together and didn't really outperform each other. Like, you know, it felt like that they had team play uh, more to mind, but that doesn't mean that Merkstar doesn't have team play more to mind. It just means that, you know, Merkstar had a bit more perform 
pit better for performers that rose to the top compared to DSAG, which might not have had the individual talent stand out, everyone just fulfilling a role and doing their job. And like I said, you really can't complain about that. Some of the best teams in sports operate that way. Um, New York Yankees, can't say that, but Real Madrid, you know, apart from players like Messi and Ronaldo, they generally had a pretty solid roster across the board. And New England Patriots, outside of Tom Brady, that team is made of scrubs. So, you know. Yeah, it's all yeah. about doing your job, and DSAG did their job. They won Div C. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's uh, so like even though maybe these teams weren't quite seated evenly, right? And IS is based on uh, Jarl's list uh, score seating, adjusted scores, and all that. Um, they're they're like based on performance and more rates. Uh, we hope this match is going to be good. You know, I always hope it's going to be good. But this match, it seems like like it could be really close. So DSAG top of Div C. Mark Star kind of bottom of dip V. It's uh, probably about as close as you can get. Yeah, we definitely had the pleasure of casting what was going to be one of the best matches. By the nature of Swiss pairing, it generally works like a bracketed seating. You know, the best teams get seated with the worst teams, so that way, eventually, the best teams can kind of rise to the top, and it's on the onus of the lesser-performing teams to show that they deserve to be in the top and create those upsets. So week one, you know, I don't want to be cruel, but let's be honest, you know, some of these games are pretty lopsided. You know, you have uh, uh, let's let's go to the um, the board real quick. Like, you know, you have Imperial going up against Davion Spud Force. You have Black Omen going up against Ace's Wild Waffle House. Um, Davion Spud House and Ace's Wild, they're filled with vets. They have some experience, but I think we know what the result is going to be there. Black Watch is going up against Snack Watch, who is their um, lesser div team. That's essentially, we know how that's going to end as well. Like, some of these matches are a bit lopsided. Let's be honest with ourselves here. We have Wild Ones going up against Blackthorns Dragoons. Blackthorns Dragoons, who in BFM, uh, who last season of BFM struggled mightily. So, you know, like yeah. I said, it's um these it's... first matches are going to be pretty rough for a lot of teams. Yeah. But this one, we had the fortune of finding and casting. I think that this is probably going to be one of the tightest matches. These teams, these two teams are very close in skill to each other, and they're very good teams. Yeah. But all that said, both teams are locked. So let's go ahead and get in there. First match, three cap grim plexus with uh six v six, three twenty five tons. Mm -hmm. But before we begin, I just want to give a shout out. Thank you very much, John the Russian, throwing a Twitch Prime sub, by the way, of MWO Leagues. We greatly appreciate it. Um, I'm not sure what Live does with the money. He could very well smuggle it to his uh, offshore escrow accounts in the Cayman Islands, but who knows? Just kidding. Love you, Live. And now we'll begin the mission. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully he'll use it to buy us more lovely assets for the stream. Who knows? Pay, pay those artists somehow. Uh, pay the artists. Maybe we can finally get those trailers going. I know Daidachi and Live were working very hard. Uh, I actually was writing some scripts for Duncan Fisher that he followed for uh, Martial Olympiad Reborn. Uh, currently not used. Um, so I was kind of in the background writing some things for the video. But um, we'll see what happens. I mean, from what I understand, they're trying to hire true professional people to come up with assets in order to make Martial Olympiad Reborn a V8 highly presentable. Because going forward, assuming MechWarrior Online's comp scene continues to flourish, um, they want to show a very professional presentation. They want professional artists. They want... Uh, they want the best for the league. They want to showcase MechWare Online in the prettiest wrapper they can, so to speak. If they want professionals, they're going to have to get rid of us. All right, what do I you disagree. see in these dropships, Saruman? Remember, everybody, this is IS Mechs only, no heroes. Well, what I'm seeing in these drops right now is Xavier operating in the Wolfhound 1A, staple light mech of all drops, was a favorite in Martial Olympiad Reborn as well. Juice is loose. Uh, Bushwhacker P2, he's got LB10Xs and ER medium lasers in that mech. Uh, not really a range mech, though, despite the LB10s reaching out to an impressive uh, 540 meters. And we got Kamichiwa, Grasshopper 5P, very interesting choice. That's a big mech. It's center torso, can easily get focused, but he's got 5 ER large lasers, so he's hoping to trade at longer ranges, not eat up a lot of damage. Prototelis in the tried and true Vulcan 5T. Five medium pulse lasers, very solid build. Bushwhacker P2 from James Bombed. Hopefully he isn't bombed for this match. He's 100% focused and ready to go. Damocles 1 also in the Grasshopper 5 piece. And they have a bit of mix of a brawl and trade deck over at Merkstar. I mean, the Bushwhacker P2s can poke at range, but they're not going to want to. And then looking over at Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy, they got four ER large lasers on the Roughneck 3A, courtesy of Nerf. Wolfhound 2 medium pulse lasers. Two Battlemaster 1Gs uh, in MK2. And true North Strong 
long those are going to be trading mix. We'll found two from Grigor Sanza. That name sounds familiar. I want to say that's an author, but it's not coming to me. And Souls and in the Flea, the Flea 15 with ER medium lasers and light machine guns. Interestingly enough, uh, a bit more of a trading setup than a brawl setup in the Flea. Can't say I agree with that. I think you want to just go all in with the brawl Flea, but we'll see how that plays out. I could very well eat my words at the end of this match. And what are you seeing now, Toaster? Yes. I've just gone for all the match. So DSAG's got a bit of a cap lead already. They have two cap to one. Uh, but right now we've got some just some slight trades going out of these Battle Masters and Roughneck on hamburger hill as some people like to call it trading with uh, the gas station grasshoppers uh the flea solzen hasn't really done much uh looks like uh ms is gonna send a few mechs over to sigma to try, try and flip that cap and i'm not sure the uh right now dsag actually has an answer to that that flea won't be able to 2v1 that and Whatever it's interesting there. to note that Theta and Epsilon are the points that are not capped in this match. So for any viewers that are wondering why Theta and Epsilon aren't getting capped, despite the fact that Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy has a strong presence over it, that is why. If one of those two teams touches that point with Mech still alive, that is a big no-no and a potential disqualification, depending on what the admins and the team leaders say. So right now, Solzhen's kind of just wandering around. It looks like that Merkstar is trying to get the cap lead back. Very admirable. And with a Vulcan and a Wolfhound, it actually looks like they have a bit more tonnage in their light lance then diamond shark alpha galaxy even though they have three lights compared to merc stars two you know that vulcan it's nasty we've seen what teams can do with that mech it's an oversized light mech it's got a lot of power it's very heat efficient and can definitely take on a wolfhound even though um some players might have a different opinion on that it will at least trade very evenly with it and perform very well against it yeah right now dsag just kind of bunched up on this hill i don't really love what they're doing they don't really control any of the map that's relevant except kappa markstar meanwhile has kind of rotated all their mechs over by epsilon and they've just kind of taken these buildings if i was markstar actually i'd just send go ahead and maybe even send all my mechs all the way up to epsi hill maybe don't don't make sure not to step on epsi hill but if you kind of control that area behind Epsilon, you can actually have a pretty good lines on both Gamma and Sigma to be able to back up your lights with just a little bit of rotation if you even stick a Grasshopper back there. But we'll see. Right now, these Bushwhackers are just kind of having to bide their time. They've seen DSAG sending mechs now over to Gamma. Um, I wonder how they're going to react to this. I think the reaction from Merkstar is going to be let's keep the Vulcan and the Wolfhound in reserve and back it up with a heavy just to make sure that we win the light fight even though I don't think it would be completely necessary especially since the flea is not built for dogfighting. Four ER medium lasers is not conducive to winning a light fight and two machine guns you know two yeah. machine guns is two machine guns at that point you're just trying to fill tonnage but it looks like that Merkstar might be over committing a bit that's what these bushwhackers yeah. are for to assist in any light fight. I don't think that this is absolutely necessary I think Merkstar scouted what was essentially a red hair with DSAG turning their Wolfhound 2s and Flea 15s back. They saw that they weren't able to make a play at Gamma, but at the same time, Merkstar is going to be sending their mechs that way to cover it. Looking at percentages, trades are fairly stagnant right now. There really isn't any standouts compared to Martial Olympiad Reborn 8v8, where we at least saw some mechs beaten to death right now, and that's kind of what the smaller league allows itself to work into. It's going to be, it's going to be a bit more of a slower play, at least... Um, for what we'll see for now, you know, because less mechs means higher time to kill since it means less people tearing yeah. your armor to shreds. So right now we have the Grasshopper 5Ps just continuing to poke at range. The Battlemaster 1Gs, however, seem to be losing the trades. MK2, 81%. 2 North Strong, 91%. Meanwhile, Kamichi was down 84%. The Grasshopper 5P, Damocles 1, 90%. They're really stretching the range. This is 800 to 900 meter uh, laser range fire. And it's all just chip damage. However, Kamichiwa's percentages are starting to go down because Merkstar is not coordinating these trades very well. We're seeing Kamichiwa kind of poke singularly. We're seeing uh, Damocles 1 poke singularly. And, of course, with the bringing of the Bushwhackers to allow some flexibility in fighting for caps and maybe help... Uh, sh kind of uh, stop a brawl situation if necessary. It means that uh, Merkstar is going to be on the back end of these trading fights. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Merkstar's deck because of that, but right now you can't argue with the results. They're currently ahead, yeah. but uh, that might change with Souls and capping Sigma. And those bu those Bushwhackers too are just a little bit slow to kind of react to all these capping, especially when your opponent has brought, you know, three light mechs, two wolfhounds, and a, a, a flea. But uh, right now, Adestria and Grieger are getting dangerously close in these two Wolfhounds. I don't... I mean, maybe you can 
you know, kind of push these grasshoppers back, but without, you know, a super strong cap lead, what's that really accomplishing? The flea hasn't even completely flipped Sigma. It looks like he had a strike dropped on him, maybe, on that point, and I don't know. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, it's also worth noting that if the Wolfhounds tried to push in, there would be no cover fire from anywhere else. They'd essentially be fighting a 2v4 against the more heavily armored division of the um, of Merc Star's um, basically trading line. However, their grasshopper started to split out a little bit. I don't necessarily support the idea of giving up on that yet, or at least I think that the Wolfhounds could have been more aggressive. They could have attacked one of the flanks, and right now we're seeing the punishment of Merc Star trading 1v1. Damocles won down 72%. And James very Bomb. Punishing him. Yeah, James Bomb also took a ton of damage in his bush trucker, I guess, when he was crossing, maybe from those battle masters. Right now we got a bit of a fight over on Sigma. Uh, the three lights for Diamond Shark have come over, but James Bomb and Prototelis have come over to back up Xavier. Xavier needs to maybe cool down with the trades here. He's he's eating some bi pretty big hits. I don't know what, what James Bomb really wants to be doing right now. He seems pretty hurt. Um, I think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to find a way to potentially engage on the two Wolfhounds and the Flea, but this is not how you do it. The Wolfhound and the Vulcan just need to go with the with the Bushwhacker following in tow. These trades are not good. The Bushwhacker is not the kind of mech you trade. With LB10s, they're going to do some damage, but they're not going to be as effective as if you're pushing. And it looks like right now Merkstar is doing it, but this is still not a good push. James bombed at 56%. This is just a staggered push. It's very indecisive. I'm not liking Merkstar's movements right now. However, Solzen is eating a lot of damage in his flea, <laughs> making poor trades. One thing that's important to note too is all DSEG's light mechs seem to have medium lasers rather than the usual medium pulse, so they even have like pretty decent range for what these trades are going out. Uh, Merkstar just kind of ate a strike there too. Oh, they're they're kind of winning these trades. Solzen's getting pretty hurt in that flea, but at the same time, Destria and Grigor are both fairly fresh. Now the juice is loose. Has come in and with his wolf found it. When he gets here, I really want to see them push and just try and control retake this uh, point back. You know, it's it. They're not at too much of a disadvantage at this point, but I think this is a fight you want to try and take. Maybe get a leg on one of these lights before they have a chance to get out. But Even may... still, pushing lights is not necessarily the best thing yeah. ever because you push lights, they can just run away. Juice is loose. Prototel, Xavier, James Bond are all moving up. I do like this push movement. James Bond is in the back 50%. He is the mech that they're going to try and protect in this push. And Grigor Samza, Adestria, and Solzen wisely pulling out. However, yeah. the push seems to be continuing. Merkstar needs to get the cap point. They are James Bond, the 49% mech, the bushwhacker that's been eating a lot of damage, wisely deciding to stay in the back, cap the point. So Diamond Shark Alpha. Alpha Galaxy has the cap lead with that delayed light fight, but now they're going to try and maybe cap Gamma, and, um, and it looks like that... In the meantime, the to... Battle Masters have kind of moved all the way across from Hamburger Hill up into these buildings. The Grasshoppers are trying to get out, and the DSAG lights might just meet back up with these Grasshoppers and go kill those... or meet back up with the Battle Masters and go kill the Grasshoppers before they can get any help. I would say that's 100% correct. Michiwa is doing a poor job showing that torso. It's taken a lot of damage that Damocles torso. Gets, however like it abs. is a standard mech it looks like 70 percent 70 kph that grasshopper is not an xl i don't think so it seems like they might be okay and right now dsag smells blood in the water and they're beginning to push Adestria, greek or samza the two wolfhounds circling over the hill solzen trying to make a move to finish off damocles one and kamichiwa prototel xavier juice is loose and james bombed however are also in this are also in position getting ready to push oh. if these bushwhackers can make sure that they don't get killed outright they can do a lot of damage damocles one however is getting focused like crazy down 42 percent and oh. damocles one gets killed by adestria gets focused out way too much protel is also taking too much damage too they need to go in on this team as a group it's split up in two different flanks right now if they circled around and got on the battle masters true north strong nerf and mk2 they could definitely score some kills but right now Merkstar is wisely poking unwisely i mean poking the medium lasers in the superior range is just allowing them to tear the other mechs of Merkstar to shreds james bomb juice is loose or trying to poke with LP10s, but once again, we're seeing that LP10s are doing a bit too much spreading. James Bombed goes down, and right now it looks like that this match is going to go in favor of DSAG. Look at this bunch up by DSAG. They're just bearing down on Juice's yeah. loose. Prototelis now trying to fend for himself, but I think it's over. The roll has happened, the dice have fallen, and this match definitely going to DSAG at this point. Meet you on Xavier trying to come up from behind, but just a little bit too slow. Um, and they're the only ones left in that Wolfhound and Grasshopper. And yeah, they have the cap lead, but 
you know, with only with the rules in this league, uh, with only being able to have a two to one advantage on caps, it's going to take a very long time, especially with these twenty minute match timers, to actually can uh, uh, secure a cap to win. play out the cap, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Secure, to secure the cap win exactly. Um, especially since considering the ticker is only going at two points a second. So what we have right now is basically Xavier trying to. Stay yeah. alive for what amounts to, he's, I want to say, he's gonna 70 try to... seconds, a whole minute, a little more than a minute. Yeah, he, he's just not going to be able to control enough points for long enough to be able to win this. And if they kill him, then DSAG can go ahead. According to the rules, if if you kill all your opponents, you can go ahead and start capping all five points without penalty. So, you know, you have to basically survive and control enough of a cap advantage to win. Xavier goes down. DSAG's got the Mexon Sigma already decapping it, so it'll be 2 1 in their favor real quick. They'll send uh, this Battle Master right up to Epsi, and they'll have some guys on Theta in a few seconds, and that'll be game. Uh, yeah, it will be game. Um, pretty solid play overall by DSAG. It feels like, however, that Merkstar was very disjointed in their pokes, and they were trying to use mechs for the wrong reasons. You know, with those with those roughnecks, you just got to kind of go in. And I understand that you can't really go in against the Light Lance, but that's why during that situation, when it was still a 6v6, teams were separated, you had to use those LB10s against the Battle Masters. You had to clean up that Assault Lance, since, as we see right here, it's the Assault Lance that did quite a bit of damage. True North Strong leading the way for DSAG sag with 600 damage nerf and his ruck neck doing 300 damage mk2 doing around 400 damage souls in doing a respectable 320 adestria 338 grigor samza 373 and this is what we've been talking about you know apart from true north strong being the primary trader in the battle master the rest of the team's damage was pretty evenly spread I Meanwhile, just... the Bushwhacker P2s just did nothing, unfortunately. Um, Juice is loose, 139. James Bomb, 102. And I think that comes down to the fact that they were trying to poke with LB10s, which is a big no-no. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe the wrong it was wrong to move those Bushwhackers over there. Let, just let, let DSAG get the you know two cap or whatever. And then send your Bushwhackers and your Grasshoppers at the Battle Masters. Take the 4v3 fight. It'll be a little harder because they have, you know, maybe... I, don't, I can't add the math and... <laughs> in my head with the tonnage but get the get the mechs that you know can't just run away from your bushwhackers right and then with your grasshoppers and bushwhackers then you can kind of control the center of the map make it easier to just outmaneuver desag definitely and it also comes back to the fact that you know the bushwhackers they were kind of just not they kind of weren't in the best places it felt like and once again the pushes just really didn't happen they were trying to push lights off points and not really securing them or chase them away and it gave DSAG the opportunity they needed to kill the grasshoppers take that 2-3 advantage when it comes to two grasshoppers versus you know <laughs> uh, two battle masters and a roughneck I'm pretty sure that the roughneck and the battle masters win that fight every time just going purely by tonnage and that movement uh, pretty much gave DSAG the opportunity they needed to close out the game. Admittedly, though, it wasn't as if the Grasshoppers were doing that terribly, though. Kamichiwa and uh, Damocles performed admirably, and the standard engine Grasshoppers definitely allowed them to survive for some time. So I kind of like that build, you know, not going to have to move all over the place. But at the same time, it was just that lack of decision-making that kind of hampered Merkstar's ability to win. Um, and we saw it with the final engagement where between the pillars, you know, DSAG was perfectly split between their heavies and their lights. So what do you do? You take the bushwhackers and you shove them in the face of those heavies and yeah. you clean those heavies up as much as possible. So that way you can get the numbers game back to you and force their lights to run. And that's something that Merkstar wasn't able to take advantage of. It was just not that strong of movement on Merkstar's side, despite the fact that they opened up with a pretty strong early game and um, managed to basically close the game out. Yeah, I'm I'm heading over the map strap real strat real quick. I did like Merkstar's initial positioning. They kind of had their grasshoppers in G7, rotated over around, controlled this area F8 G8, which is usually pretty strong. Meanwhile, <laughs> all that DSAG really had control of was this hill, right? And it was pretty hard for them to get their lights in uh, into Sigma. You know, you kind of have lines from the top of that hill with those battle masters, but to do that, you basically have to, you know, make, give yourself give the enemy grasshoppers free shots to be able to cover your lights on Sigma, and it's not a, not a great place to be. What I would have, and I've I don't remember. I think it was uh, Ash's team or who was the Aussie team that I first saw this is I think. 
if if I was playing this map, I really want to stick like one ER large mech mech all the way up in like F10 G10. That way you can kind of trade and scrape the guys on Gamma and Sigma from that position. But said what we saw happen was uh, Merkstar, you know, they they tried to move their their bushwhacker and their two lights over into this Delta Nine area to fend off. Uh, the desag lights, but the desag lights just had like better trading for that range. They all had medium lasers on their lights and were effectively able to just kind of ignore the bushwhacker who has got took quite a bit of damage when crossing to get over there and help them. And then when they did finally push the desag lights, all the desag lights did is they met back up with their battle masters who timed it pretty perfectly, honestly, and pushed straight over, got those, forced the grasshoppers back, and then kind of just killed. Killed Merkstar down in this little box. Um, and once again, it's worth noting that um, in that box, essentially what was happening was that um, basically, and I hope to God I'm drawing on the right map strat since I have a couple open right now. Basically, DSEG yes, and um, Merkstar were kind of fighting in two different locations. And, you know... DSEG was very neat. They had their heavies over here, lights over here, and Merkstar, if they just bunched up together all and just pushed that right flank and hit the heavies perfectly, then we would be talking about potentially Merkstar winning. But unfortunately, they didn't. They kind of tiptoed. They continued to play losing trades and use mechs not to their advantage, and it came and bit them in the rear end. Yep, yep. But we'll, I have to say, you know, as much as we were kind of talking bad about Merkstar, I think we do have to just say, well, well played on DSAG's part. They did a very good job there. They no, were I'm sorry. Clearly... You're, 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 oh, oh, Toaster, careful. You're, you're cutting out, buddy. You sound like a... <laughs> they, were, they were very well organized. They played as a team, kind of what we talked about at the start. You know, they might not have some, like, you know, huge, crazy stat laying down players, but they're all, they just seem to work well together. They have, seems like they have very good calls on their side. But anyways, looks like both teams are locked. We're switching teams. This time Merkstar gets Hamburger Hill and uh, uh, DSAG will get the gas station. So let's see how things change up. Uh, definitely. And now we are going in three, two, one. Right. Switch the scenes properly. No radio casts so far. No radio casts so far. Hey, there weren't... I don't believe that there were radio casts some... Um, in Marshall Olympiad Reborn, we seem to have a very good track record with that. Don't mean to pat ourselves on the back so hard that our hands break, but just saying, you know, if there are radio casts, it's not us. Who's got four thumbs oh, yeah, and doesn't radio cast? Season, but it was me last season. Well, all right. So I don't remember it, so it didn't happen. All right. One thing uh, I don't think I, we mentioned last match. Um, you're only allowed to use each chassis five times over the course of all five drops. So there's going to have to be some changes. You know, they've already used up three, three battle masters on DSAG looks like based on the teams though, they've got two more of this, this match. What do you see on these teams though, Saruman? What I see on these teams is similar builds as last game. Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy bringing the exact same builds, it looks like. Battlemaster 1Gs with ER Large Lasers trading at range. Nerf the Roughneck 3A bringing four ER Large Lasers once again to assist trading at range. Grigor Samson Edestria bringing Wolfhound 2s. Six ER Medium Lasers. Souls and then the Flea 15, which McGoat kindly pointed out in chat has a machine gun rate of fire quirk. So those two machine guns are actually a bit stronger than I thought before. Meanwhile, uh, Merkstar took the onus of realizing that since they lost, they were the ones that had to mix it up. They have an assassin hit squad with Prototellus and the Juices Loose playing the assassins. Twenty could have a fight here respectively. over on Epsi. The two Wolfhounds have met up with these assassins. I don't know that these Wolfhounds really want to take this fight uh, they Juice don't want to take this fight. I think that they want to leave mm. right now because those are ER media mix. They are not meant to fight in close range brawls yeah. with assassins that have jump jets and are very good at evading, but the Juice is loose and Prototellus are not using these assassins correctly. What are you doing? Go in on them. Your SRMs are not meant for poking. Your SRMs are meant for killing. And right now the Juice is loose and Prototellus are just leaving. They're playing it very cautiously. Well, juice is loose is leaving. Like Prototellus, I don't know. He kind of started heading towards the Wolfhounds. Now he's heading away. 
Yeah, they, I oh think they goodness. just need to this go is in not there. A good trade. This Prototellus is... is eating damage. This is a this is a huge gaff right now. Prototellus and the Juice is Loose look like they're trying to hide behind the hill to maybe get an ambush, and then Juice is Loose realizes that they really can't get anything done, and they're leaving. Prototellus and the Juice is Loose are trying to poke with mechs that aren't meant to poke, and it looks like that they might have some reinforcements coming. We have uh, Damocles One moving in the Warhammer Six R, which is filled with ER large lasers and two Gauss rifles, but this is not the position that Merkstar wants to be in currently they just want to get on Kappa and it looks like the two wolfhounds yeah. kind of got out of dodge they need to take that now and near Salon now going back to builds real quick near Salon with uh, four ER medium lasers and two Gauss rifles I'm sorry Damocles one with um, two ER medium four ER medium ER medium lasers, two Gauss rifles. So I kind of stepped over my words a little bit, chat. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, Grasshopper 5B by Kamichiwa, 5 ER large lasers. So we saw some early aggression, and I think that uh, Juice is Loose and Prototellus missed a grand opportunity to get some picks. An assassin can definitely trump a Wolfhound in a light fight properly yeah, properly executed. Particularly if they, they have ER means on those Wolfhounds. Uh, it seems like that's just kind of... Maybe a little bit too skittish after last game. You need to know those assassins can definitely out DPS those wolfhounds. Uh, it's not going to be a super easy fight, but with ER Meads, it's definitely a fight that's in your favor. Now we've just kind of got back the usual positions. DSAG set up some battle masters and their roughneck in the uh, gas station or landing pads, whatever you want to call it. They're doing some trades over to Hamburger Hill. Um, mostly, I don't know, these, these Warhammers are not quite the ranges you want to be trading with these dual gauss mechs uh, ever since the triple range nerf but the dsag lights are back on kappa it looks like they don't want to give this up and well uh, they can you know kappa is going to be the primary point to fight for dsag needs to get their stuff together prototellus and juices loose managed to hit grieger samza with a nice srm alpha but even still 82 percent um Xavier trying to come in with a bit of the support, so we've got a three-on-three -three light fight that should be handedly in Merkstar's favor. They need to realize that the other part of DSAG's team is on the other side of the map. They have a perfect opportunity to get some kills and wipe away this light lance, it feels like, and they're not going to take it. These assassins are very good light duels, duelists. They are very hard to focus, especially when you have wolfhounds with ER medium lasers. That is not a high DPS mech. That is not a mech you bring to fight other lights. So right now, it just feels like that Merkstar is just missing a prime opportunity. I mean, they haven't necessarily lost a mech, to, so to say they're playing it badly is kind of inaccurate, but at the same time, they could be in an amazing position right now, yeah. but it looks like DSAGs might do them a favor. Souls in the fleet, diving in there. In. Uh, he's, he didn't take too much damage. Uh, maybe just... Little, little bit of aim mishaps there, but now, yeah, Gregor. But it Gregor, looks like the Wolfhounds are starting to close in. This is not good for DSAG. This is not where they want to be with ER medium lasers. It looks like they got a little bit overconfident, started feeling their oats a bit. Uh, Gregor Samza poking 69% of the Wolfhound. Adestria eating some shots, 91%, but still not down that much. Gregor Samza, however, down 65%. That is not good, and it looks like that that 65% is somewhat of a meaningful 65%. His center torso is almost completely orange. It's orange from the almost completely open. Red armor, orange internals and Get those assassins in there guys come on let's go the rest of dsex pushing up rewind. behind and merc stars pulled their warhammers and their grasshopper down here so they're all in on this point they need to just kill these lights so they can turn around and deal with the oh battle masters and roughneck God, i'm gonna have a heart attack from this this is just terrible merc star you're giving me heart palpitations just push in for goodness sake Pick a side on, no this is yours the assassins can definitely do some damage to the wolfhounds. They're practically begging you for to go in on them and start the trades. However, it looks like that the heavy lance on the side of Mer of um DSAG isn't doing that well either. MK2 eating some withering shots from the wolf warhammer down 64 percent so those are well placed gauss rifles however true north strong nerf and mk2 are committed on this double envelopment however damocles one and near salon are backing them up very nicely and this is a fight over kappa and this is not in dsag's favor the longer they keep up this fight the better chance that uh Merkstar has to win this to cap heavily in their favor and we have xavier trying to do some cheeky things right now with the wolfhound 6r those er medium lasers are trading at He's fairly decent range Range, but, but he's still, still eating. Lasers hurts a lot more. Yeah, he's hurt. He, 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 it, well, he has eaten some big shots from MK2. Oh, Grigor so. Sons again tried to go in on Prototellus again, down 59%, but Prototellus overexposes himself and dies to Nerf, who manages to focus all the ER large lasers of DSEG in and get the kill. Kamichiwa, however, trades in kind, kills the weakened Grigor Samza, and it looks like finally that 
Merkstar able is... to even this up slightly. True North Strong pushing in 69%, eating all the medium laser fire from Merkstar, along with large laser fire. The Battle Masters are rotating in and out, but I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. I this can't tell who's cool. winning. <laughs> I don't know. It's so hard to tell. It looks like DSAG is losing these trades, but at the same time, a lot of those Merkstar mechs have to be very hurt. True North goes yeah, down, though, the same... in the Battle Master. And at the same time, the Battlemaster 1Gs are just poking one at a time, so it's easy for Merkstar to focus one Battlemaster down after the other. Solzen down 59%, Nerth down 53%, MK2 is pretty much dead in his Battlemaster. This looks kind of like a bro. This looks kind of like a, just a terrible situation. Battlemaster goes down. Uh, XL Battlemaster for MK2 gets shot in the shoulder and drops like a sack of potatoes. Xavier brings Solzen down, and right now it looks like this match is going to be cleaned up in favor of Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy. Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy, I don't mean to be offensive, but was doing everything they could to give Merkstar this win. They were trying to push the light fight with Wolfhounds with ER medium lasers. They were trading one at a time with Battlemasters. DSAG, what are you doing? doing i think yeah i think they just needed to have those battle masters hang back just a little bit further they had pretty good lines when they were enveloped and you know either they're gonna push your battle masters or they're gonna push the lights and the lights are just gonna run away destria you know running off trying to get some caps but merc stars had the two to one advantage for such a long time it's gonna be like virtually impossible for uh destria to win this and you know, Merkstar even still has, you know, lights to go and chase down that Wolfhound. And, you know, at 41%, it's probably just one or two, two good, one good burn, really, just to take that, that mech out. Looking at Adestria, you are correct. It is one good burn to the center torso. Dark orange armor. That means that there's probably only about, I'd say, 10 points of armor in there, probably less. Uh, so definitely, you could just glance at a couple of ER medium lasers, and he will drop like a fly to a fly swatter. And it's just an absolute cluster. What we just saw, d and Merkstar definitely are not familiar with this format. Merkstar missed plenty of opportunities to end it out, but then at that time, d was just throwing throwing them opportunities felt like DSAG was you know felt like DSAG was in such a commanding league when you know Merkstar pulled all their heavies into that little little choke point area and didn't push right uh, they gave so much time for DSAG to move their battle masters and rough battle masters and roughneck into prime position and then just kind of filtered in one at a time and died I mean, and that even goes double for the Battle Masters. The Battle Masters were literally poking one at a time. They were just taking turns, trading pokes when both of those Battle Masters probably should have been exposed and poking out at the same time instead of just poking one at a time. It made it very easy to focus one Battle Master over the other, and it kind of just uh, did Merkstar's job for them. They knew who to. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is a really strange map. I guess good rally on Merkstar's part, though. They managed to kind of pull their Gauss Warhammers in, and I'm, I'm feeling those Gauss Warhammers had, had a big match. It seemed like they started doing a lot of work once the DSAG mechs kind of started closing in. You know, DSAG had that kind of nice envelopment where you couldn't really push the lights. Um, Merkstar didn't do anything about it. But then, you know, those those Warhammers kind of managed to pull things back, it seemed. I would I'd guess they did the majority of the damage on their team, though. I don't know. The Grasshopper was definitely putting out some damage. Not really well, sure also, what the well, Assassins were doing. The Assassins were just trying to play keep away, I guess. They were just trying to keep pressure on the point as best they can. But it's worth noting that DSAG also did Merkstar another favor by bringing their Battle Masters super close to the Warhammers, allowing their Gauss Rifles and their ER Medium Lasers to be putting out maximum amounts of damage while they still had the range advantage. And it's also worth noting that DSAG might have seen an opportunity that wasn't necessarily there. They thought that their double envelopment could basically win them the game, but it's not like, you know medieval 2 total war or whatever where you're you're dealing with ai troops that just automatically lose morale penalties on being surrounded this is a game with actual players just because they're being surrounded doesn't mean they're going to throw in the towel and it looks like that you predicted accurately damocles won mvp of this match for Merkstar, 700 damage in that warhammer 6r he was doing work and the skittishness of the assassins definitely shows neither of them broke 100 damage but i mean they held the lights so that's probably good enough. Adestria in his wolf found two, 433 damage. Meanwhile, Grigor Sansa doing 190 damage. Those wolfhounds at the beginning were doing a very good job zoning the assassins to at least make sure that they made Merkstar think twice about pushing in. Yeah. I, 
it was just it was such an awkward engagement for so long. I feel like just a little bit more decisiveness was needed on Merkstar's part, and they could have won that, you know, even even easier. They they managed to pull it out in the end, but you know, I think those assassins, they just uh, they needed to be be re- willing to commit, you know. MK2 and True North Strong also on the Battlemaster 1Gs, I think got just a bit too close to the engagement. Once again, allowed the Gauss Rifles and the ER Medium Lasers to be doing maximum amounts of damage. Uh, and they had ER Large Lasers. There was no need to commit yeah. to that kind of double envelopment movement. Like, there was nothing to be gained. And plus, DSAG the entire time was down on caps. They were the ones that needed to make the move. They were the ones that needed to not stay in that pincer, especially since their mechs are not conducive to making those kinds of jump maneuvers. Once again, we're talking about ER medium laser wolfhounds. Your DPS is inferior to the assassins, and yet they kept on trying to jump them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. I live and learn. Uh, maybe just, you know... Some uh, first first game of the tur- tournament jitters. Uh, it's it's pretty close uh, so far. One one game each, so both teams can uh, still still manage to bring this back. Um, some very slow matches from what I'd expect though out of uh, a three cap conquest. I guess part of it's the choice of caps on Grim Plexus though. But now we are on to Canyon Network. So I'm going to go ahead over. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, chat was uh, chat's being pretty hilarious with the assassin push right now. Uh, had a little bit of a laugh there. But um, um, to go back to that uh, situation again, like just, oh my goodness, uh, DSAG just, uh, they were fighting over a cap they didn't have to fight over. But at the same time, you know, got to give credit to the Wolfhounds. They were going on for a very long time, and Destria was doing his darndest to make sure the game went in DSAG's way. I mean, they just were going too strong. They were trying to go too ham with mechs that weren't meant to go ham. Uh, you want to go to the map strap real quick? Oh, yeah, you're map I've, strap? I've okay. headed over to the map strap. I'm just kind of drawing what I what I saw. You know, it took so long for Merkstar to like, like kind of decide to do anything, really. Um, the the DSAG lights, you know, they kind of headed immediately to Kappa. They met those assassins. Eventually, I don't know, they, neither team really wanted to commit on the other. I think the assassins and or the wolfhounds on DSAG side, you know, just kind of rightly decided, hey, well, if you're not going to com- completely commit on us, we'll just sit here poking you with our ear meads. And eventually, I guess Merkstar felt the need to bring their heavies over there, but that allowed the Battlemasters from DSAG, who'd wrapped like all the way around through F7, up to F6, back to F5, and they eventually just kind of charged into their death, unfortunately. Uh Definitely. And you know what? For all intents and purposes, the Wolfhounds, once again, they were doing a very good job zoning. And that was obvious by the fact that the Wolfhounds had a pretty solid amount of damage. The Assassins, whether they were scared because they didn't think they could in the light fight or scared because they just didn't want to engage, were just dancing around this hill and DSAG was punishing them. What uh. DSAG probably should have done was just kept their heavies along this Gulf 7 area. Oh, wrong color. Um, let me erase that real quick. What they DSAC should have done at the beginning was just keep their mechs around this Golf 7, Fox 7 area, prepared to out-trade any of Merkstar's mechs that are in this area that tried to come out and retake that hill position right here, and then just go for Sigma and Gamma. Like, they had prime map control. All of Merkstar's team was at this cap a point. That was oh. a perfect situation for DSAC to take the lead back by switching their lights or at least moving a couple of their lights or at least moving one of their lights away from that engagement, preferably the flea to go take Sigma and Gamma. It was just a case of tunnel vision on DSAG's point. They, they had so many more options available to them that they just didn't exercise because I think they just smelled blood in the water. They thought they had a perfect opportunity to end the game then and there completely forgetting the mechs that they had. They didn't have mechs that were meant to finish. They had mechs that were meant to kind of slow play the match, to take advantage of bad positions, to win trades, to secure cap points. DSAG's first match against Merkstar was very well played. I feel like that was the play that they needed to embrace more in order to win the game, but this time they just got way yeah. too aggressive. They pushed for no reason. Yeah, even even I think if they just kind of kept their, their battle masters, you know, here in E5, E6, F5... <laughs> You, know, you can shoot straight on the on the capper from that lane. It's pretty easy easy lines, uh, and you know let the let the lights stay in G three. They can run out of there quick enough if need be. And then if they run out and the Merc Star guys start pushing your battle masters, well, you can just come right back. But 
anyways, it looks like both teams are ready. We're on to. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna show. Yes, that we map are. Real quick. And we are going to Canyon Network. Oh wait, no, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, Canyon Network. We are launching toaster. Yep, we are launching. Uh, okay. because the so Canyon Network is going to be a lot harder, I think, to play this one quite as slow as Grimplexus, because unlike Grimplexus, now we have, you know, Theta as this kind of central point for engagements. Um, I think this will probably most likely end up into a brawl, but, you know, we'll find out. All right, Saruman. You popped into any mechs yet? What do you see? Uh, unfortunately, I've not popped into any mechs because I don't have to pop into any mechs. I can just look at them thanks to Canyon Network being the way it is. Grasshopper 5P and Warhammer 6Rs, Kamichiwa, Long Range Grasshopper, ER Large Lasers, Warhammer 6Rs, I'm guessing are four ER Mediums and two Gauss Rifles because I see those two strong Gauss Rifles popping out of the center of that Warhammer right now. And it looks like that they also have a Wolfhound 2 with Xavier going to secure the Epsilon Point. And meanwhile, they also, or at least secure the area around the Epsilon point and meanwhile they also have their two other mechs a uh, two Vulcans from James Bond and Black Templars Raptors Xavier needs to be real Cat careful Bob. here he's got four Shadowhawks headed straight at him he could take a lot of damage here who luck oh, looks out boy. only takes one percent but he's not out of danger yet um he's got these two no. go ahead oh I'm sorry no 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 I'm sorry sorry go on I he's just got these two Two Warhammers watching over him and this Grasshopper, but it looks like DSAC might just push this corner. Uh, Merkstar is fairly split. They sent two mechs over to Kappa. DSAC might just be right to go in here, try and finish out these heavier mechs, but if they're going to do it, they need to do it fast. They have to. Their drop deck is conducive to just getting into a brawl push. This is five Shadowhawk 2Ds with LP10s and SRMs. I love this deck. That is, if DSAG can make sure to get the push in. Right now, they're going undercover. It looks like they're trying to find the proper opportunity to go in. Look at MK2. It looks like he's going to try and jump on Kamichiwa, who is isolated. They're poking with some LBs, but similar to what Merkstar realized with their Bushwhackers, LBs are not weapons that are conducive to poking. And look at True North Strong Uprising, MK2, marching on Kamichiwa, and it looks like that he's about to say sayonara. Oh my goodness, 86%. MK2, Solzin dropping on him. Solzin in the Uziel 6P, that's the only real range mech that that um, DSAG has, and he is in the fray. They jumped on Kamichiwa. They're gonna bring him down immediately. Great focus fire. I love that movement from DSAG. They're pushing onward, and right now near Salon, trying to drop down as much damage as they can. They're trying to leave the weakened mechs in the back a little bit, so that way they could alternate mechs in and out. It looks like near Salon is the next focus target for DSAG. They're just dropping down and rolling in, and it looks like near Salon's going to drop soon, down 53%, 46%, and it, he's going to be finished, but Cake Town and MK2 broke away from the main fight in order to try and get some damage down on the Wolfhound 2s. Look at near Salon try and tank, but it's not going to mean much. Meanwhile, James Bond drops into the fray against the Shadowhawks. This is not ideal. Nerf self-destructs himself, but that's not a big deal. He was very weak. Black Templar's Raptors takes down Cake Town, who was also very weak. Percentages don't exactly favor either team, but my goodness, right now the Shadowhawk 2Ds are just doing so much damage. Black Templar's Raptors drops in his Vulcan 5T. Xavier and the Wolfhound 2 get surprised by MK2. Hello! Hell, say hi to my SRMs and LB10s. Uprising, however, gets killed by James Bond bombed and the match looks like it's getting a little even looks Trades like it's going in down. favor of Merkstar just based on tonnage Damocles won in that uh, Warhammer 6R you know, the champion of mat last match is still quite fresh he managed to rotate all the way back over to Sigma and has been doing work from here ever since and now he's protected by Xavier and James bombed uh, it looks like MK2 Solzen are going to have to kind of manage to try and pull this back if they want to win Mm hmm Yeah, but it's going to be on Damocles to, you know, bring it back. And very well can, because Damocles is definitely one of is a very strong pilot statistically in uh, Merkstar, and it looks like now that um, unfortunately Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy lost their focus a little bit. Xavier takes down MK2 with some range fire, and it looks like it's just the light mechs kind of orbiting around the Warhammer. Yep. Um and 
But the biggest thing, however, to notice is that the Caps, uh, Merck Star did an excellent job securing the Cap lead early. Very ballsy play from Xavier, who basically went to Epsilon. Uh, now Solzin's going in ahead of True North. True North really probably needs to be the one to tank this knot. And the Uziel, the Uziel looks pretty daggum hurt. Um, so I mean, the Uziel doesn't even have an arm. They're missing two ER medium lasers. He's got large lasers, but I'm not sure how much that's going to matter. True North Strong, however, is also trying to come in and tank whatever damage he is. It looks like they took your advice. He's starting to close in. Solzin's trying to finish off the Vulcan, but it looks like that he's just not able to get the shots necessary to bring it down. The Vulcan is super tanky for a mech. Solzin down 33%. Meanwhile, True North Strong is marching in on Damocles, trying to finish him, but look at that gush shot! True North Strong goes down. Solzin takes out James bombed but right now i want to say Solzen is yeah um lost both his arms oh no uh, overall well played i think maybe maybe diamond shark just hesitated a little bit too long on that corner i think as soon as you see xavier there and get the idea that there are those heavies on that side you just gotta push right away um but a oh, oh, great push by them you know <laughs> happy to see the shadowhawk one of my favorite mechs uh what do you see from these damage scores my good sir what what I see from the damage scores is that Damocles won once again, doing a lot of damage. However, Xavier, 661 damage. He was kind of orbiting around the brawl rather brilliantly for the entire match. And I do like the way Merkstar kind of reacted to Kamichiwa's death. And I also like Kamichiwa's movement. He kind of went into the open as he was dropping in order to make sure that the rest of his team could shoot on the DSAC push. Because as Kamichiwa was retreating into the open, basically all the Shadowhawks had to expose themselves. And looking at the Shadowhawks, um, MK2 leading the pack, almost 600 damage. Nerf and Uprising, 307, 308, respectively. Solzen, 371, and the Uziel Cake Town, unfortunately, was the first uh, Shadowhawk 2H to drop, I believe. Either that or he lost a lot of his weapons. But, um, yeah, that was a very awesome push. Very good drop. That is what we want to see in this kind of division. A lot of activity and a lot of kind of different drops to mix things up. DSAG almost had Merkstar with the surprise push with the Shadowhawks. Um, I think that maybe if the focus fire was a bit tighter, they could have won. But overall, very expertly played by both teams. DSAG bringing down Kamichiwa fairly quickly. Their first three targets dropped very quickly. And at the end, it just felt like that once it was the lights and the Warhammer, they lost the Warhammer. And that put um, DSAG into not a favorable position. Yeah, yeah. It's a very good play. Very good focus by them. But at the same time, Merkstar, you know, Damocles one did a very good job of like, rotating out where to where it was hard to focus him but he still had shots you know he rotated all the way around from sigma kind of dropped into that valley where while dsag was dropping in on the warhammer in the other end of the valley and was able to pretty much just sit there and farm uh, for most of the match and you know xavier doing a great job in that light pilot you know they made it very hard for dsag to kind of push on that warhammer you know do you want to chase the lights around? Do you want to push the Warhammer? Well, if you're going to push our Warhammer, we're going to sit here and shoot you in the back and make you pay for it. Um, overall, good good play both sides, though. And I am receiving word uh, through friendly Seabiscuit and Discord, member of the 228, that DFA just finished their match against SA 505th and uh, took a 5-0 victory with 30 kills to 2 kills. So uh, commanding victory from... Uh, 228 uh, DFA over SA 505th. Um, congratulations to them. But anyways, I'll head over to the map strat real quick. Um, I'll just draw this out real quick here. Uh, DFA or DSAG just pushed straight to this corner. Almost caught uh, Xavier out. Xavier manages to kind of get away. And then Merkstar had, uh, I don't remember who was in the Sacrificial Grasshopper, but they had their Grasshopper up there and their their Warhammer is kind of chilling on this ridge. You know, that's your pretty typical uh, kind of receiving pattern if you're trying to hold a push on that corner. And they did a pretty good job of it. Usually the guy in Junkyard, you know, he's just dead. It's just his job to try and tank it out as much as he can. Maybe, you know, you run back into B5 if possible, but with the speed that DSAC had, that, that wasn't going to happen. Merkstar managed to regroup their lights in the time that the grasshopper was dying, though. Um, eventually, DSAG, you know, they kind of wrapped up here, killed the grasshopper, came back, and, you know, we had just all madness. So, so it's a madness ensuing down here. Uh, Damocles, you know, managing to rotate his Warhammer all the way back here into Bravo 4 to where he just had just kind of nice lines shooting in on there while the Merkstar lights just kind of worked up and around on these sides. 
um, making it very difficult for DSAG to do much of anything at the end of the match. You know what? Like I said, it was still very, very close at the end of the day. I think yeah. it came down to the fact that DSAG just lost sight of Damocles 1 after they focused down Kamichiwa, after they focused down the first Warhammer and kind of brought him down. They lost track of where the rest of the mechs were. And um, yeah, it kind of basically came back what happened was that it kind of... Yeah, exactly. It was a snowball effect because the Warhammer 6Rs, that's a lot of damage that they're putting out. That's a 50 damage alpha from the Gauss rifle and the 2ER mediums, and they're within prime range. So, like, you have to get the Warhammers down immediately. It felt like that DSAG kind of just lost track of where the Warhammers were, and that also is a testament to how the the good situational awareness of the Vulcans, James Bond and Black Templar's Raptors kind of got in the lines of DSAG to kind of confuse, split their brawl a little bit, kind of threw themselves at the team. And those Vulcans, as we've seen, can tank very, very well. And as a result, it bought Damocles some time to back up. It also brought the lights some time to start shading out. We saw Xavier and um, yeah, we saw Xavier and his Wolf Pound 2 essentially uh, kind of orbit on the side of the brawl and use his um yeah they did a good they job they didn't overcommit well. and you know kind of kind of shaded shaded the movements of DSAG without you know getting themselves caught where the warhammer couldn't support them and kind of made DSAG make that tough decision of you know how do we how do we win this how do, do we push the warhammer do we try and fight off these lights while line of sighting the warhammer um, and you know what? Once again, it also has to be said that uh, Kamichiwa, very good decision making when he got focus. He kind of backed himself out into the open, and it was the same with all the other mechs. Merc Star's team definitely knew how to handle that brawl very well, and it was good situational awareness from everyone on the team. Everyone kind of worked together to buy the mechs that needed to have time to do the damage to get the damage, and it was evident with Damocles 1 and Xavier ending up carrying the game. And even then, the mechs that died still put out good damage numbers. You know, it's not like Kamichiwa died with 100 damage, he put 300. 59 damage. That's that's a lot. Can't yeah. be overlooked for for yeah. those kinds of mix. Yeah, yeah. No, he definitely. You know, we talk about a lot about how much damage Damocles did, but you know, you your teammates are the ones that put you in the position to do all that damage, right? And you know, definitely hats off to Kamichi for doing a good job of reacting to that push, tanking to it. You know, just buying time for his team to kind of reposition and get you know get good shots, let the lights from Kappa come back and. Overall, well played both sides. It was, it was a good match to see. Well fought. But now DSAG, they're out of Shadowhawks, so I wonder what else they'll be bringing this match. Something tells me that DSAG's uh, Shadowhawk strategy was meant more to be a surprise, and it almost worked, and we'll see what they bring now because their mechs are locked and we are ready to launch. But that was just still... That was an amazing drop. That is what we are looking for. Yep, yep. Is is like perfect, perfect tonnages. Uh, I think we did the maths right before this match or before the match started. You, with uh, these rules, you have fifty five point four tons average on your team, or fifty no fifty four fifty four tons average about. And uh, so those Shadowhawks, they just kind of fit like perfectly in if you add in like a, just a couple of lights or two, or even or in the case, I guess they had the Uzeal. But now, what do you see, sir? What I see is uh, quick draws. Oh, That's I'm, what I see. I'm a not lot familiar of with the quick draw. What, can you pop in and see what what weapons those quick draws have? I'm not. I don't remember what the 4H runs. Remember the 4G is the like 4H three. 4H is large. running SRMs and medium lasers. So it looks like once again we are going to see a bit of a brawl rush. Yeah, and this this time on the side of D Saga, or I guess the same same side for the brawlers. They've also got two assassins over there, so more SRMs, more brawl. Meanwhile, Meanwhile it looks like Merkstar is bringing a bit more of a conventional team. Damocles one and the Warhammer six R with medium lasers and Gauss rifles. Kamichiwa and the Grasshopper five eight, uh, with a combination of ER mediums and larges. Good choice. That laser vomit's going to be good for medium range engagements, which is what Canyon Network needs. Near Salon five ER large lasers for the extremely long engagements. Prototelus Flea seventeen and Black Templar's Raptors a Falcon five T with medium pulse lasers. Um, so right now we see the quick draws kind of moving around for DSAG. Once again, it seems like they're. They're going to be trying to stay as a group. Meanwhile, the Assassin Hit Squad, led by Solzen and True North Strong, are kind of getting ready to take the cap, spread the map, 
but yeah, I think that what's happening is that the quick draws are waiting for the perfect time to push down Epsilon's line and get into these Overwatch mechs. These Wolfhounds, I think they know they're there. They shot down the UAV, so they have some idea that there's mechs here. I'm not sure that they got a good eye on what those quick draws are or what he... Whatever oh, and it looks like the quick draws are going to start pushing over, and they're going to try and push across the caldera into Prototellus, and maybe round up and above. M MK2 is just kind of all by himself, though, while his teammates are still in this canyon. I, this is not a good this position to be. This is definitely miscommunication. MK2 threw himself away right here. Oh, this is not good. Uh oh. But yeah. oh boy. Um, yeah, it looks like MK2 is going to drop. Um definitely seemed like a miscommunication he kind of pushed over the ridge himself meanwhile souls and true north strong are trying to get in it mk2 however amazingly is alive that's kind of incredible and right now the assassins are in the push true damocles one getting focused down like crazy 62 percent mk2 dies from a strike drop by damocles one but damocles one is definitely going to follow soon 44 percent now he's gone souls in trying to jump on kamichiwa this time they need DSAG needs to learn the lesson of last game and drop these heavier mechs quickly and they're trying to with the quick draws and the assassin pushing straight through Kamishiwa at 79% getting focused down hard by the quick draws but it looks like the SRMs and the medium lasers just aren't doing enough impact they're focusing very well but SRMs just aren't making enough impact Kamishiwa standing still by basically standing his ground very good and um yeah the quick draws are just yeah. Kamichiwa finally goes down though near salon still trying to do some work in this battle master i don't know this could still go in the in favor of d sag it's going to be real hard they need to ice this battle master asap though black uh black uh templar's raptor is just doing a ton of work in the back with his uh vulcan <laughs> actually overheats and shuts down but he's not going to be punished for it now true north uprising and cake down have to decide you know what target do we go after uh Looks like yeah, they, they're just kind of outspeed, but they way out ton the Merc Star mechs, so maybe they can still pull this back. But even still, look at Xavier once again repeating his success in drop four by orbiting around the main push instead of just getting right into it. And it looks like Uprising sees him. They're trying to focus down some shots, but these quick draws really don't have any range. It's all just short range, and the Vulcans and the Fleas and the Wolfhound definitely are faster than them. Not exactly a fan of this setup. It looks like that there isn't enough speed to stop the Fleas and Vulcans. Merkstar kind of countering this push by just, you know, having... Being able More to kite speed, them out, being able yeah. To kite around them, yeah, and it's and everything. True North gets legged in his assassin now too, so they just lost their their fastest mech's ability to maneuver. Really, looks like uh, Cake Town needs to get up here. Uprising, you know, trying to tank, do fight this out as best he can, mostly by himself. True North still getting some SRM shots in there. And we're seeing the effect of the kiting right now. Look at the percentages. Just way, way one-sided. Quick draw 4 ace and assassin 21s just aren't able to get it done. I can't say I like the choice of the quick draw 4H. And unfortunately, MK2 put over way too soon compared to the rest of his team. I mean... Yeah. Uh, it's just... That was, um, yeah, just that was just very sloppy. Just some miscommunication there, MK2 kind of dying a little bit needlessly, losing a ton of armor early on. But at the same time, you know, maybe they needed to kind of devote their assassins earlier on to harassing the, the Merkstar lights, you know, kind of keep them off their backs. They did notice, as I, I mentioned, I believe Black Templar's Raptors was doing so much work in that Vulcan. He managed to kind of rotate all the way around behind DSAG and just getting back shots for days. What do you see from these damage numbers, though? What I'm seeing from these damage numbers is what you know I always like to see. Light mechs doing work. Xavier doing work similar to last round. Uh, Damocles 1, Kamichiwa, Near Salon. They kind of just tanked out the fire, the withering fire from the quick draw 4Hs and got it done by allowing the lights to just kite around the heavier mechs and kill them. Black Templars Raptors doing 500 damage with that Vulcan 5T. Very solid numbers. And meanwhile, MK2... Single digit damage. Rips, sorry, MK. Uh, you tried. I'm pretty sure that's a miscommunication. But even then, the quick draws damages seem a little low. Uprising 371, cake down 273, OP uh, 119. True North doing 460 damage in that assassin. Once again, I'm just not a fan of the quick draw pick. Those are very large mechs. Um, their weapons loadouts aren't that impressive. It definitely felt like that they might have been able to have a better option. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess the the jump jets are valuable. You know, I kind of expected to see some uh, champions today, but it is hard to brawl on uh, Canyon Network without jump jets. So maybe, I mean, I have to think that's part of the reason they chose those mechs. Um, but yeah, the quick draws definitely seem like a odd choice, maybe kind of paying for that. And definitely MK2 seems like slight miscommunication went the wrong way and went into the other canyon, not into the left canyon, not the right canyon. Go right next time, MK2. But yeah, I have to say though, Kamichiwa, I, once again, did just, I have to say, such an incredible job tanking in that uh, grasshopper. He lived for so long. Amicles, you know, first target, he went down pretty quick, still did pretty good damage, but they're on Kamichiwa pretty soon after that. But, you know, just their shots didn't seem to phase him. Um, yeah, and it's just like, you know, it's, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It just seemed very, it was an interesting drop to say the least. That's really Yeah, I'm heading over to the map strat. I'm going to draw it out while we get ready for this last drop. Last drop will be uh, HPG. Um, but yep. so anyways, this time, you know, DSAG sent their quick draws. They kind of balled up here. They put up a UAV that got pretty quickly shot down. Um, they also sent some mechs up to Theta. I believe both of the assassins they chased, I think, was it Prototelis in the flea? No, uh, Prototelis mm -hmm. was in the flea up there originally. I think he ran all the way back around through Echo 4 to get out. Um, and so eventually then, you know, DSAG, they decided to kind of push, oops, wrong color pushed down into this valley um except for mk2 who kind of like went down this way d said kind of came up and over mk2 eventually kind of ran back met up with them but he got taken out by a strike they're pretty quickly on damocles's warhammer here um but it took them long enough i think to do that push that uh, merc star you know they had already started moving back through epsilon and then even Merkstar's Wolfhounds, which had originally kind of come up behind the quick draws, wrapped all the way around and were kind of, you know, shooting behind them while they tried to focus down that Battlemaster and Grasshopper. But at the same time, I'm not exactly sure if DSEG um, was baited per se. Maybe they were, but at the same time, pushing under the Caldera and over from Delta 5 wasn't necessarily a terrible idea, especially considering the fact that they were scouted. You know, we saw that their mechs in this quadrant area of Delta 5 I'm doing the wrong color now, oh boy. but they saw that their mechs in Delta 5 quadrant that it was essentially seen, so they just thought that the best way to do would be is take as little damage as possible and push. MK, unfortunately, pushed way too soon going yeah. over this ridge and getting iced by the withering range trade fire, but even without even with MK, unfortunately, is communicating, that match was still very close. It was still something to be desired. It's just so you know, um, at the end of the day, they didn't bring the heavies down quickly enough for the quick draws to just be able to mass down on the lights, take cap points, and influence the cap game. And the lights were essentially able to dance around them for the entire match, and that was evident in the fact that, you know, Xavier got a lot of damage. A yeah. lot of damage. Yeah, Clear for, MVP for that match. For as long as those quick draws were in like optimal SRM range, you know, it seemed like they should have maybe done a bit more damage than what they did. Maybe not MK2, but you know, the rest of the team, you know, we saw his laser mechs on the side of Merkstar, laser lights even, you know, five, six hundred damage, I think. And I think, you know, DSAG, you know, most of their quick draws are only pulling like one, two, three hundred damage. And once again, I really don't like the quick draw choice. The quick draw kind of showed itself as not being a mech that can really bring down targets. DSAC's focus fire was not terrible. It was actually really good. It's yeah. just that it felt like the battle was lost in the mech lab. Quick draws, they don't have a lot of firepower. They're pretty quick and they have jump jets, but it felt like that maybe if they, you know, brought a higher alpha mech, maybe some Kentaros, maybe if they utilized the Vulcan more, maybe if they brought more medium pulse or something of that nature. I mean, shoot, maybe if they even tried sneaking to the LB40 Warhammer in there, you know, it's not the fastest mech, but the moment that LB40 Warhammer engages those mechs, it's done. It's, it's, it, yeah, it puts out team. so much damage. But, anyways, I'm just going to bring up the map so you guys can see what the cap points are. We're on to, for the last drop of the night, HPG Manifold 3 cap. So, on this map, Theta Kappa Epsilon. So, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, he, you can't really, you know, can't you can't just hold data. No more basement strats. Thank goodness. I don't have to queue up the elevator music. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I enjoyed our fashion show. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe next season a more eights. 
but it's it's hard to control both epsilon and kappa at once, right? D4, that quadrant of this inside interior area of this map, isn't particularly strong. The strongest points on the inside is definitely spine, and it's it's a lot easier it's a lot easier to uh, control the other gates, the the gamma gate and the sigma gates. So it'll be interesting to see. You can't really stick mechs up here between epsilon and kappa, so. Um, I'm not sure you'll really be able to do a full-on control strat uh, just because, you know, if the other team does choose to brawl, well, they, they kind of just win theta, and it's hard mm -hmm. to control uh, both Kappa and Epsilon. Maybe maybe if you get guys up on, th on the top of the map early enough and the other team just doesn't scout it and send their brawlers up there immediately, you can do it. Um, but it'll, it'll be interesting to find out. You know, Merkstar All Night has been going for, you know, mostly kind of range tradey strats uh, except for that one match where they brought the 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 two bushwhackers um and they're doing well with it so we'll see if uh, they decide to change things up or no oh, maybe they'll just go all everybody stick everybody on the wall and get like one or two guys with jump jets that can just hop up and down to resecure those caps when necessary and you know what? It's not as if DSEG is necessarily playing terribly per se. You know, no, obviously no. drop two and Grim Grim Plexus, that was definitely a gaff. But overall, these brawl pushes were very well coordinated and the focus is there. It felt like that if DSEG changed their mech choices up just a little bit, maybe instead of Shadow Hawks, go with something a little punchier. Instead of going with quick draws, go with something a little punchier. The DSEG right now could be sitting pretty. 4-0 and clean this up. I mean, right now Murdar's got this 3-1. The decision is theirs. ISC, I don't think, puts a lot of weight and kills similar to Marshall Olympiad Reborn, but at the same time, DSEG is showing a lot of moxie, and these matches are definitely very, very close, so props to them for putting up a good fight. It's just that, you know, on certain matches, the decision making just, I don't, I don't know, it seems to it seems to be lost at times. Yeah, well, I criticize both teams for that, but it, it'll be interesting definitely. to see. Um, i I. I, we were talking earlier about you know what mechs we expected to see. You know, three twenty-five tons is is pretty limiting even in six v six. I I kind of wanted to see uh, how well the the champion does though. So P that mech came out pretty recently, and it seems like it'd be a good kind of brawl push. Maybe not the best for Canyon because it doesn't have jump jets, but you know, it's it's a pretty fast sixty tonner, fairly tonnage efficient. Kind of does similar things to what the roughneck does or the not the roughneck the linebacker does uh maybe not quite as good as a linebacker but you know this is is mechs only tournament so and take you know what, what? You can get. and i think interestingly enough perhaps the reason why um d seg and merc star might not be playing the champion is because it's so new they might not know how to fit it within their drop deck yet they might not know necessarily what to do with it maybe they didn't do their homework on it as much as they did other mechs they're going yeah. with mechs they know and mechs they're more comfortable with or maybe, it's not like the mechs they chose are terrible it just feels like there could be better choices yeah or or maybe maybe they did their homework and we're just you know full of it <laughs> we, i definitely haven't scrimmed using these rules so uh, who knows? It's it's hard to think of, you know, how to restrict and change drop decks based on the fact that you can only bring IS mechs. That is very true. I mean, ISC is coming just off Marshall Olympiad Reborn, and Merkstar definitely played a very, very long season with Div B being bloated with a lot of teams. Well, not necessarily bloated, probably the wrong word, but it was definitely filled to the brim with a lot of teams. So their play playtime was extended greater because their division was bigger. DSAG, Div C also was a pretty big division. You know, Martial Olympiad Reborn, it was a long season. So obviously, an ISC kind of jumped right into its inaugural season. I believe that there was only a week or two period where teams were able to yeah, play between Martial Olympiad Reborn and ISC. So yeah, yeah, there's... that's not a lot of time to come up with strategies and mech builds. Yeah, they're still handing out prizes for more eights from what I know. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah apparently with some teams that didn't get their prizes yet, that's not good. We uh, may have a miniature riot. <laughs> well, uh, we'll get it eventually, will, I'm sure. I will allow you to come into my bomb shelter, sir, if the riot does break out. We can share the bomb shelter together. Well, I'm just going to point them in live's direction and say, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know, that might not stop the rage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like Merkstar has readied up. You know, you know one thing, one thing I, I just am thinking about now Merkstar hasn't brought any crabs yet. These are the crab oh. people. The crab people of lore. I mean, we saw, you know, more eight 
they brought a full crab deck, even breaking the rules. Um, I don't think so. And though. memeing like with this total, the total tonnage though three twenty five. So what would that be? That could be like what they'd have. Yeah, it's six crabs. Crabs are a fifty oh, ton net, correct? Or fifty five? I don't, I don't remember. I think they're fifty five, but you could fit a lot of crabs, and you know, maybe you have one little flea along for the ride or something. But I, I, I want to well, right see some now, crabs. I don't know. There's no shark. Is well, there a shark mech? I guess there's the death strike, but definitely not getting those in this tournament. So, unfortunately, not. But I'm thinking right now, looking at the tonnages. I don't know. They might have some crabs in there, but it's not like it's an all six crab deck. I mean, oh. eh. rip the memes, everybody. Not exactly sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if the memes are going to be there. I mean, 325 tons. And plus, you know, Kami kind of hinted at me that uh, the fact that them, that uh, Merkstar and White Knight Legion kind of used crabs and king crabs illegally in drop one left a sour taste in everyone's mouth. So Kami's playing by the rules. He's being a good person right now, uh, making sure that he falls within the guidelines. So I think that they might want to put the crab deck on hold for a little bit. Maybe well, well, we'll find out. Maybe some just some regular crabs, no king crabs, just just some regular crabs and MMA, their little friend, Mister Wolfhound or Flea or whatever. Um, but yeah, Merkstar ready. We're waiting on Dsag. Come on, Dsag. We had good drops tonight. Um, I'm, I'm still rooting D-Sag for Dsag kinda... here to bring this back to a three-two decision. I'm not sure that you know having a four-one versus a three-two matters, but I, I believe they might earn more MC. Um, I'm not sure how the prize money is when I think the prize money for this tournament is a little bit weird. It's just based off of game wins, right? I believe so. But then again, I'm not really sure about so. the prize. In, and uh, there also might be independent rewards for kills and such like that. Um, Souls and asking, are you guys set? Kamichi was saying. Yeah. OK, it looks like DSAG was maybe just a little waiting there. Uh, All for right. MS. So just just put it in the check um but yeah it's it's worth noting that these matches were very 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 close and i mean well apart from drop two that was not as close but i mean overall yeah i'd say that the matches were very close dsag definitely showing some moxie in this tournament going up against Merkstar, who despite not performing as well in the back half of martial olympiad reborn season eight looked very very strong in the first half so they definitely have a lot of skill there's a lot of talent on that team and dsag is showing that they can definitely go toe-to-toe with it Oops, yeah, DSAG showing, you know, they deserve their their position as winners of Div B. You know, they're they're Div-C. ready to t- or Div C, yeah, they're Div C they're ready to take on these the big boys from Div B, ready to move up, make their make their statement. You guys well, are better you than called us. a toaster, five crab twenty seven. Oh yeah, so here we go. Seven. Uh, good call. I guess um, they managed to fit the tonnage in by throwing in a black knight with medium pulse lasers. I would imagine that this is just a crab blitz with every crab having a combination of either medium pulse lasers or medium and large lasers. And yeah, it looks like they're going for the medium pulse lasers. And uh, I they, they wonder must be 50 if, tonners. I must have been wrong. It's like all yep. crabs on deck. And it looks like that DSAG is going to meet them in kind with Roughneck 2As with medium lasers and LB10s. And it looks like Cake Town kind of learned the lesson from the last drop. They're bringing in Kentaro 18 loaded to the brim with streaks. Uh oh, that might not oh, be good. No. <laughs> Uh, but Grigor Samza, Wolfhound 2, bringing medium lasers, I want to say. Solzin bringing the only low crab. No, he's got medium pulse lasers. So, yeah, this is definitely looking like it's going to be a brawl. A brawl in the lower area, perhaps. Merkstar looks like they're not going to waste any time. No breaks on this crab train. Let's skitter into the lower end and show these guys how we do. Uh, five crabs poking up on the Roughneck 2A. True North Strong. Uh, perhaps no push under. Thought there would be. But it looks like they're actually going over the top. Damocles he's- 1 leading the charge. Xavier, Black Knight 7L also putting some pressure on Solzin and his Cicada 2B. Thought that was a crab. Sorry, chat. I am wrong. Looks like but, Xavier um, is going in and the crabs are going. They're going to run straight at these roughnecks on top. Oh, Looks like Xavier is the that first. Might not be, and that might actually be a pretty good thing since right now Grigor Samza is out of position along with Solzin. They really can't intercept any mechs from this push. Right now the roughnecks are just trying to find cover to protect themselves as much as possible. Xavier, however, you know, a load of damage in that Black Knight down 57%. Streets are rolling from the Kintaro cake down, putting the pressure on. Uprising brings down Xavier. Look at this brawl rush going on. Black Knight dead. It's left up to the crabs and the crabs are skittering into each other. It looks like they're crab walking into each other, not knowing where to go or what to do. Near Solon, however, brings down True 
Eleanor Strong and follows it up with a kill from Uprising. So the lead switches over from DSAG over to Merkstar, and the streaks are still flying. Laser, medium pulse lasers are still going. Crabs are just trying to orchestrate this brawl one at a time. MK2, Cake Down, coming from the side, putting down some damage on Danica. Neos Salon, however, is in the middle. Near Salon, Crab 27B getting focused down 72%. Yes, the split is happening right now, and damage is very well spread, but percentages are just not on the side of Merkstar. Near Salon taking a beating at 56%. Kamichiwa down 49. Damocles won 47%. And right now the brawl is continuing. Solzen putting down some pressure with the Cicada 2B. DSAG using a more mobile element. Look at Solzen's poking. That's very strong. We like it very much. And the percentages are down. Merkstar trying to slow down their trades. And it looks like that they're trying to play the poke game slash strike game by putting down some damage to bring the percentages back in their favor. Yeah, they need to organize a push here, I think, though, because, you know, they can't really out-trade this... Uh... Cicada, I don't think the Cicada with its speed will just kind of chew them apart from the edges. Oh, oh and right as you say that, Solzen eats a terrible shot in his center torso, down 70%. That center torso is one shot now. He went from being one of the healthiest mechs to one of the mechs that's closest to dead from a very bad poke, not favorable, kind of did... Um, a bit of a lazy in and out poke a little bit. Didn't have the S key mashed already before the W key. So that was a little bit of a, of a mechanical error there. But it looks like that Merc Star is still not necessarily committing to a push. Their mechs are just trying to slow roll their uh, movements. Just take the trades where they can get them. Yeah, Merc Star has the, the mech advantage and maybe the health advantage. It's weird. DSAG has got two very hurt mechs and... Too seems like fairly fresh mechs in that roughneck and the Kentaro. You know, the Kentaro is streaks, which you know aren't the best against mediums, but at the same time, they're IS streaks, so they don't have that giant cooldown penalty like what uh clan clan streaks do. Solzen playing a dangerous game here in the cicada now that he's so hurt. Uh, I don't know that he knows Kamichiwa and Damocles are coming up this ramp right beside him. Uh, he's got to be careful. Hunting, and there oh, we no. go. The shot goes down. Solzen just barely escapes the clutches of the crab. But and they Kamichiwa might get him before. Going in. They're Oh, uh, but Solzen, it looks like that Kamichiwa is trying to push out to get extra damage, but the Kentaro laying down some streak fire. Kamichiwa gets Solzen, so the match is even more in favor of Merkstar. Kamichiwa down 60%, finally goes down by MK2 from a roughneck shot, and the rest of the percentages on Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy are just uh, not looking good. However, Merkstar at the same time is also equally beat up. Yeah, these crabs, you know, they're very tanky, but they're also very hurt right now. Damocles down to 37%. I believe his crab is actually legged based on how slow he's walking it's 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 not really it's a dangerous game for both of these teams they have all got some very hurt mechs that could probably go down in a shot or two neither team really wants to push the other because oh oh well that being said crimson helix you know bravely walking up this ramp near salon and prototellus also kind of marching up taking some pot shots maybe they just feel they have the advantage right now those crabs um, do roll damage really nicely well, the pokes are just going down very intelligently. I love what Merkstar is doing. They're kind of all poking as a team. And I just have to think that if Cake Town did not have streaks, oh, that this match would have been decided much more in their favor. Those streaks did not do um, DSAG any favors. And once again, that's another strike against DSAG in the mech lab. If that was a SRM Kintaro instead of a Streak Kintaro, I have a feeling this drop would have ended much more in favor of uh, DSAG because that's one mech essentially not really able to finish mechs. That's a lot of spread damage from the streaks. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps, but uh, I will, one thing I will say is, Mark Star, uh, they did a pretty good job of pushing when they did because DSAG was still pretty split. You know, they'd sent, I think, two, maybe three guys down to basement, and those roughnecks were kind of by themselves at the start. You know, Xavier doing a good job just marching up there in his Black Knight tanking for his team. I, it almost might have been better to have, you know, some of the crabs lead the push. They can just kind of rotate out a little bit better. <laughs> That Black Knight is just all CT these days ever since the rescale. But uh, Merkstar are going to just finish off capping here, and looks like we're going to have a 4-1 decision on our hands. Well played by DSAG, though. Uh, th they've played some very close matches tonight. You know, they're by no means going out, out of these games with, you know, 6-0 decisions or anything like that. Yeah, and this push also was close. And once again, it feels like that this was a bit of a mech lab choice more than anything. Uh, we're going to see the damage, and I'm willing to bet, yep, Kentaro doing almost 600 damage, but all that damage was spread between everything, not what you want to see. MK2 redeeming himself after uh, getting iced in the quick draw, leading the way with uh, six, almost 700 damage in the roughneck. Great game by him. Uprising and True North Strong doing 
a little less than 300 damage in their roughnecks. Solzen doing 268 and a Cicada 2B. He was playing very well until he just ate a nasty alpha that opened the center torso. And Xavier, unfortunately not leading the way with damage. Only 83 from the Black Knight. He was definitely the first focus, and that was great focus fire once again from DSAG. However, the Crabs carried the game, all of them doing between 300 to 450 damage. Very, very tight spread from Merkstar. Very well played game from the Crabs. Yeah. Uh, overall, good, good, well played for by both of our teams tonight. Uh, DSAG, Merkstar, Sean. So, so just, uh, showing some uh, some good coordination on both teams. Uh, maybe some little sloppiness that needs to be hammered down, but it's the first week. Uh, you've got a, lo a long ways to go till the end of this tournament. Yep, and Merkstar definitely will have to get ready because with the Swiss pairing ruling, uh, opposition is going to be much tougher. Um, you know, they're going to play teams that are have better records, so theoretically they're going to be playing better and better teams, at least in the league, as time goes on. So Merkstar, very good game. DSEG, also a very good game, but definitely Merkstar has to be prepared because from here on out, if they want to just keep winning each week, it's going to get harder and harder and harder. Yep, yep. All right, so looks like we're going to try and get some interviews in here. Um, and it looks like Opie and Kamichiwa have joined us. So welcome, guys. Great games. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, absolutely love it. Great matches. Um, however, definitely have some questions for you guys. I'm sorry, Opie, uh, Kamichiwa. We're going to have to grill you a little bit. Yeah, um, we're going to be... I'm gonna be thrown over the uh, <laughs> thrown over the metaphorical grill, as it were. You know, not gonna smoke you. Uh, just kidding. But um, anyway, uh, drop one. Opie, want to say a very solid win. Drop one. You guys played that out. But Kamichiwa, I have a question for you. What was the plan with the bushwhackers? It definitely felt like you guys weren't utilizing them to their full potential. Yeah, there was supposed to be light interference, and then the uh, the lights did a really good job of not engaging until assaults had engaged and i still don't know what happened at um sigma so something yeah. went on over there apparently well, they got was... kited really bad so that was good on you guys well but... yeah what you, happened you... At sigma was that they got kited and they wanted to try and force a push at sigma but it was a push against light so do you have any idea on what the thought process was for your light lance for that one since it didn't uh... seem we had actually kind of trained on that is just because we knew it was grim using the er's is What's nice is we can kite people like that. Like when you look at it, that first, especially that first drop is cutting off to gamma and then leaving everybody else behind that. That's really what changed it. So then when they hit when the light lands hit Sigma, then you sent everybody, then the party came and then our party came down off the hill. So that that's pretty much where we wrapped that one up. We, yeah, that, we've been toying with that just because Grim is such a big map that it's very, very hard to, it's it's very hard to take on three lights at once. And you know what? Going to you, Opie, now, drop two, you guys had a very golden opportunity to once again utilize your range, slow play the game, and get a win similar to drop one. But it felt like that you guys were using mechs in ways that weren't meant to be used, to put it lightly. Yes. You had Battlemasters closing in on Warhammers being perfectly within their e our medium laser and Gauss range. Those weapons operate within 500 meter distances you came within three to 400 meters with er large little basil masters and at the same time it looked like you were trying to light duel assassins with er medium laser wolfhound so could you just take me into the thought process well, behind the choice with with the er's against the with the with the wolfhounds against the assassins it actually works again fairly decently there on grim is because you know you run outside 300 meters and go okay come get me um and it, it it ended up, I think a lot of the guy talk, you know, talking to the guys, it ends up being, it's very, uh, we tend to be a very aggressive team. And so we're just trying to figure out this whole, uh, range strat and working, you know, we're working the control like that. And from what the guys were telling me is that it ended up with thinking that they had kind of left out towards what is it? Golf, uh, five area. And, uh, so it just it just ended up using the wrong tool at the wrong place, and so it happened. But 
But at the same time, while your lights were kiting very effectively, your wolfhounds were going in. You know, you can definitely say that the ER medium laser wolfhounds are very good at kiting, and they were doing that at the beginning. But at the same time, your wolfhounds were kind of standing still for a brawl. And you have to remember that the assassins only got a 20 kph disadvantage. When you yeah. consider mech ignitions launching from the pressing the W key and just launching straight at them, if you're running away, those SRMs are still going to be able to make some contact. So at the same time, it still felt like that you guys were fighting from a position of disadvantage, especially considering the fact that the cap game was not in your favor. Um, yeah, it, we kind of ended up with a little bit of fixation there at Kappa, unfortunately. But it, you know, the call was made and we tried our best. So. Oh, that's, definitely. That's I mean, it was a nice try. And now going to Kamichiwa, what was the thought press process behind you guys in that drop? Because you were getting surrounded bad. Yeah, so we uh, we saw the Battle Masters early, and we decided to pretty much just ignore them because I'm not about to start trading on our Gauss Hammers against those Battle Masters. That was a recipe for disaster. And then we noticed they were pushing us as the Light Lance was engaged at Kappa. So the, the idea was that we were going to swing and take out the Light Lance first and then deal with the Battle Masters because we were going to rotate behind that wall so that if they had taken the mountain position, they couldn't get shots on us. However, they decided to push in the trench behind us and that was just really bad for them because we just fought a war on two fronts and we fought it better even though some of our assassins didn't really put up the biggest numbers they just are impossible to kill with the armedians yeah and uh, and trying to trying to keep on an assassin while it's moving with the rlr not easy all right, now going into drop three, Opie. I do love the idea behind the two pushes. One focused completely around Shadowhawks, another focused completely around Quick Draws. And from what I saw, Focus Fire was clean, and you got onto the first mix. Toaster and I have our thoughts about what went wrong in that drop. But what do you think, Dsag? Well, could have done better. A lot of it ended. Well, a lot of it ended up with um, True got a disconnect in the middle of it. Then, oh, I didn't know that. That uh, explains that's, why he and that's was... why True ran in late. Everybody, when yeah. everybody saw that, he it popped out and popped back in. But um, and he was, he was we were so deep in the point. There's no point in stopping it. But it it went on. Um, he but, was already down twenty five percent on his mech by yeah, the time exactly. So he had been in the fight. Yeah, exactly. So it's you know I'm not going to ask for a redrop on that, but. Uh, the thing is, it we ended up getting a little bit strung out a little bit further. Um, there were some mis some miscommunications going on. Unfortunately, that seems to be a little bit of the theme. Of um, is who's who's doing what and who's going where. Uh, but it ended up going pretty good. Um, and like brawling is kind of our special. We're we're very good at that. But and we really we actually really like those shadow hawks for doing that because they have good punch and good amount of tank. Uh, it just ended up that we fed in a little too lightly in my so and it happened. Um, well, it definitely felt like that for drop two. Um, you had the right i you had kind of drop you weren't three. able to get the war hammers down, and you definitely I mean. Yeah, sorry, drop three. It definitely felt like that you weren't able to get the Warhammers down, and that ended up being punished. But at the same time, the Shadowhawk, why the Shadow? Well, it's we were just kind of going through uh, the list of, you know, IS medium, because we like going the same speed with the same weapons. It, it really does, especially in a brawl, like the, when, when we get in a brawl where we like it, we're all running the same distance. So we're all staying close to one another, and we're all moving the same speed. Um, you know, we were just looking through. It's like, you know, you could take bushwhackers, but, you know, with Canyon being Canyon, having the advantage of jump jets is, it's significant. So that, and that's where it came down on that. Cause, and then the Griffin just, the Griffin gets torn apart far too easily. And the Shadowhawk is just a little bit more. Hmm. Interesting. Um, now, drop four. Um, it felt like you kind of learned the lesson of drop three by not focusing down the heavies enough. Uh, instead, you opted for quick draws since obviously you used up your Shadowhawk counter. But why quick draws? I mean, I get that jump jets are pretty strong, but the quick draw, like, no offense, but it felt like that the quick draws lack of high powered weapons was used against you. I can understand wanting to go similar speeds, but it felt like bringing something with a little more oomph behind it would have been more efficient. Uh, three SRM six is nothing to nothing to snap at, but um, it, we in our testing and trying things out, it was actually working really really well in the brawl. 
um just because speed jump jets uh and it does have it does actually have some pretty good armor structure quirks that we took advantage of and unfortunately with that i do think that went a bit a little bit better um just because if mark wouldn't have gone in the wrong place i was actually calling that drop and i'm like okay bottom d5 and then i watched mark go over the hill go up where did you go the wrong bottom of d5 (laughs) the wrong bottom of d5 (laughs) so that that one was on me but (laughs) um uh, to me the biggest problem we had in that drop at least from what i'm seeing is we didn't really have the assassins are great at taking out heavier mechs they're not so great on the anti-light score there are, there are better mechs for anti-light, so it's, you know, yeah, I think that's really, because it's, the it can eat, can eat that, it was the lights that tore us apart. Yeah, I don't think you guys really no, used any some... Vulcans. That might have been a good place to slot in your Vulcans, because those things yeah. with five medium poles do a pretty good job of fighting lights. Maybe not the best, but, you know, they're pretty, pretty better solid, than, especially among ISC. Yeah, that, so, I mean, you know, it's a new format. We're learning it. Uh, it's it's highly entertaining to go okay so this would be a perfect place for x clan mech but we don't have that so yep. yeah definitely it's making you think outside the box and now call me take me since those drops were pretty similar in their execution um take me into what Merkstar side was thinking during those drops i saw that in drop three you kind of left yourself out in the open so that way your team could kind of focus on the brawl mechs so that they couldn't be behind cover i actually lauded that decision i thought it was very smart but what were some other moves that your team was making that we might have missed um just uh we we're trying to instill the idea of kiting into some of the Vulcan players and they they started to learn it by the time we got to drop four drop three was a little bit uglier we made a lot of mistakes in uh in kiting we had a ton of range we didn't use it as good as we should have um, just the idea basically was that if it was a range deck we were going to trade and we, we knew we could out trade when we were on equal ground because they were out of battle masters uh, the Grasshopper Battlemaster trades never went well, but once they'd run out, we knew we could trade with them. But when it came down to brawl pushing, the idea was just stay on top of the wall and back shots because there's so many places in Canyon where if you're not paying attention and you don't have good map awareness, you're going to get shot in the back. And we did have a couple instances of that. One time we accidentally suicided a mech because he, he got a little bit too happy about back shots. But... We also had a pretty running joke when we saw those quick draws come over the hill. We're like, oh, yeah, somebody must have waited and told them last minute that IV4 is unallowed. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, fair enough. I mean, they weren't IV4s, if I remember correctly, but still um, a lot of fun. But anyway, uh, now going to drop five, the Crabs. Opie, what was your team's reaction? We knew it was coming. It, we were sitting there going, is it this, is it this one? It, yeah, okay. And then, we're, and then when we finally got to draft five, it's like, well, here come the crab brush. Uh, again, we kind of set that up to... The streaks probably weren't... The, the streaks on the guitar probably weren't the best call. But, you know, what if there's a flea out there? And some t- and those ghost guys need to get solved. But... um the whole the whole idea there was again get the two cap advantage then basically try to stay on top and shoot best we can um we've really actually been very improv- improve like uh, very impressed with the roughneck uh what is it the 2a uh i'm not sure just is be the loyalty yeah. one uh, uh the 2a no it's not the loyalty okay. one it's uh but it's with with uh, medium pulse and twin lb10s you can dead side pretty well in it and it just takes a beating and keeps on ticking. So, uh, it, like we we're, I'm very pleased with how that drop went. It was pretty much on a knife's edge until the end there. Yeah. Was, um, I, will, I will say, Opie, to your comment about the flea, like, believe me, you don't need streaks to kill a flea. I feel like that, um, the best thing that would help is to just get away from streaks for that, unless you're running super light drops, since it definitely feels like if your Kentaro didn't have streaks, if it had SRMs, you guys would have came out on top, since that Kentaro was very, that Kentaro was very active in the fight, and he was doing a lot of damage. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but anyway, um, Kamichiwa, why do you keep bringing crabs, man? Why? Crabs are good, man. I'm I'm a I'm a they're stick up for Kamichiwa here. They're oh my gosh. That's, are you kidding me? They're, they're... They haven't failed us yet. 
I guess so. Okay, but um, <laughs> I think that's all the questions I need to ask. Um, Toaster, anything from you, sir? Uh, no, no questions here. Uh, just, I just want to say good job to the crab people. Good job to the Diamond Sharks. So. Yes, DSAG. Amazing games. I hope that we can see you guys down later in the season. We're looking forward to keeping an eye on you guys. This was a very, very strong set of drops from both. Yeah, it was a it was a great time. It was a great fight. Thanks, Kamich. It was a hell of a. Yeah, you too, man. That was freaking awesome. All right, we'll we'll scrim, and I want to see we'll see if we can unlock the secret of the crab. <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were onto it, but I can't tell you what it was. All right. All right. Have a wonderful day, both of you. Good game. Oh, guys, man. Good Jeez. Have a good- Thank you guys for casting. I'm sure it was great. I can't wait to go back and rewatch it. Yeah, it was. It's always can't... a blast. Never gets old with the crab people. <laughs> All right, y'all have a wonderful night. Hashtag crab people. Oh my <laughs> god. All right, peace <laughs> out, Kami. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. I guess that's going to be it for me and Saruman. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, tune in for more ISC action. Uh, we'll be casting some more matches just this week. Uh, we've got one match lined up on uh friday at I believe it is is it oh i don't remember uh i believe we can look at the caster schedule right look, now let's, let's, let's look at the caster schedule. yeah it. friday friday night or wait, no, uh no. i think it's friday night hold on i think i have it right up here this is not good okay so yeah here's the schedule so DSAG Diamond Sharks is done, so Casters, Toaster, and Saruman for May 9th, oh, 10 that's, p.m. That Thursday night, yeah. Thursday night at 10 yeah, p.m. Yeah, Thursday night. And then after that, we also have another match cast at 11 Saturday. p.m. Dropship 4 versus Cameron's Highlands, Sons of Thunder, casted by Toaster and Saruman. That's at 9.30. Yep, and that, that'll be Saturday. So Thursday and Saturday, we'll have two more matches. Uh, hopefully be good matches. D4 in uh, Cameron Highlanders, also in uh, DSAG's division, more eights, uh, be fighting. So. And you can definitely expect to see more of, or not see our ugly mug, since we don't have face cams, obviously, but hear more of our ugly voices, hear me going crazy over comms, toaster, trying to bring the analytics in, uh, both of us also failing to do math according to the chats, especially with the crab edition, but you know, you'll definitely be seeing more of us, it is not over yet, uh, we hope to cast much more of these drops, and we'll definitely hope to see some really exciting matches, especially as ISC draws on, because... That is the nature of everyone's Swiss pairing system. Yep. GG's everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye.